So I thought we'd look at a variant Sudoku which brings in some very surprising mathematical properties into the solving of it. To go back to the basics, a Sudoku consists of the numbers one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box of a nine by nine grid. In an original Sudoku, you, didn't, you don't have to use the numbers at all. You could use symbols or anything. It doesn't, wouldn't make any difference. With this puzzle, we have a couple of extra clues that do bring the maths into it. We've got some little killer clues on the side of the grid which tell you the sum of the whole diagonal they're pointing to. So this 25 is pointing to four cells. If we add up those four cells, they will add up to 25. And for this 27 clue, that's a five cell diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. Those five cells, which could include repeat numbers, will add up to 27. We also have these purple lines in the grid called Renban lines. They have to be a sequence of consecutive digits, although not necessarily in the right order. So this one up here, three digits, it could contain one, two, and three in any order, or it could contain five, six, and seven in any order. So that's all we get. No given digits in this puzzle, just a bunch of lines and those sums outside the grid. You may have noticed some of the arrows are pointing along various lines as well as other cells. And what you have to think about is that one of the properties of three consecutive digits is that they will be divisible by three. If you take three, four, five, that's 12. It's divisible by three. If you take nine, eight, seven, that's 24. It's divisible by three. You can work that out because the middle digit will always be the average of the other two. So that must be x times three. It's always divisible by three. Now, what that means is that for this four cell diagonal, where we've got the 25, we know that the three cell Renban line adds up to a multiple of three. What must be left over is a digit that must come from the set one, four, or seven. And a mathematician will know those as one modulo three or something is what I think they're called. And we're using this modulo concept in this puzzle because it's really helpful. If we look at the number on the opposite side of the puzzle, we've got a 23. Again, the three cell Renban on the line must add up to a multiple of three, and then we're going to be left with two, five, or eight to go into this cell here. If we look at these vertical lines now, we know that one of them is from one, four, or seven, and the other two must not be from that set, because any three consecutive digits will have one from one, four, seven, one from two, five, eight, and one from three, six, nine. So we're using the modulo concept in a slightly different way now. When we start looking at the other two clues we have in the puzzle is when it gets exciting. We've got this 15 clue. Now that is a number divisible by three, and so is 27. So we could eliminate the three cells on each of their diagonals, and that will leave us with two cells that remain divisible by three in the case of the 15 diagonal, two cells that remain divisible by three as a total on the 27 diagonal. And since this cell down here is always going to be fixed, you know, whatever number that is, it is going to contribute to those two, then these two cells must be from the same modulo set. And we know they can't be from 147 because it's on this line with a 147. We know they can't be from 258 because on this line they're with a 258. So those must be from the 369 set, and we can actually make a start on solving the puzzle in that way. It's a bizarre setup of a puzzle with almost no clues in it that lets you use this idea of modulo arithmetic to actually begin it. Who comes up with this? <laughs> this one is by a Dutch constructor who's known as Mr. Menace, which is pretty appropriate, I think. Goodness knows how he had the idea. The fascinating thing is you can watch Simon solve this on our channel and he has to go through these thought processes where you realize that the Renban line must be divisible by three and that leaves a remainder. And when you take that from the sum that you've been given, you can play with those numbers. And you also have to realize that a Renban line must contain one of each. It's just a really interesting Analysis, you know, you, you may have known about modulo numbers as either a mathematician or just as an ordinary person, but you may never have realized that they could have an actual application. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, if this is an actual application, I guess puzzles are an actual application. That, that, it's is, not a, that a is a very good point. <laughs> yeah. And I was wondering that as I said it. <laughs> 
brilliant. If you love puzzles, you can check out more from Mark and Simon over at Cracking the Cryptic. And if you just enjoy cracking puzzles and giving your brain a workout, why not try today's episode sponsor, Brilliant. They have an amazing and ever-growing catalogue of courses and quizzes, all sorts of great stuff, covering math, computer science, all sorts of science in general. It's all super interactive, as you can see here. It's lovingly designed by people who really care about what they're doing. I always feel that bit smarter after a session on Brilliant, and I'm particularly keen to try out this new content all about coding. To try everything they have for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash number file, or click the link in the video description, or try that QR code on the screen now. As an added bonus, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Our thanks to Brilliant for supporting number file. So I'm going to highlight row three, row seven, this box, this whole box here, and box six. And the interesting thing about those, those four things I just highlighted, 